starters. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Bellevue Bruin Sports Network. Coming to you live from John Stella Field at Brown Park in Omaha, Nebraska, we bring you the second day of doubleheader baseball action between the top two teams in the North Star Athletic Association. The home team, Bellevue University Bruins, currently on top of the standings with a 17-1 record in the North Star and the number two team, the Dakota State Trojans, who are 14-4. Yesterday, Bellevue swept the doubleheader, winning 4-3 in game number one on a walk-off base hit and thumping the Trojans 11-2 in the nightcap. Mick Krupski back behind the microphone with you. Chris Williamson not here today doing dad duties, so if he's listening in, glad that you were getting your ears today, if not your insights on the Bellevue baseball program. Overall, the Bruins are 32-11, and 17-1 and in conference play. Bellevue is 17-0 and on the season at Brown Park, a perfect record. 9-1 and one in the month of April, Bruins rated number 16 in the current NAIA Coaches Top 25 poll. And today is Senior Day. After game number two today, 17 young men on the Bruins baseball squad who are finishing up their baseball careers will be honored. So stick around after game number two for those Senior Day ceremonies. Dakota State Trojans out of Madison, South Dakota. Again, the opponent today. Overall, Dakota State 31-12. 14 and 4 in conference. They are 19 and 8 playing away from Madison and 7 and 3 in the month of April. These two teams have been the top teams in the North Star Athletic Association over the last couple of years. In fact, the two teams have combined for an 80 and 12 record in conference play combined over the last two years, and that includes the games they've played against each other. So you take those away, and that record would be even better. So we look forward to another great day for baseball. It's a little cooler. Temperature right now 45 degrees in the Omaha area. Again, the breeze out of the northwest, about the same as yesterday, in the teens, four miles per hour. Again, we're going to see some filtered sunshine right now, mostly sunny, but there are some clouds in the area, and the cloud cover is supposed to increase as the day goes on. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for today's game. First of all, for the visiting Dakota State University Trojans. Here's the starting lineup for head coach Darian Hardy. Leading off for the Trojans and playing left field, number 88, Jeremy Green. Batting second and playing right field, number 18, Corey Brownson. Batting third, the catcher, number 38, Ryan McDaniel. The cleanup hitter is the first baseman, number 87, Cameron DeMaria. Batting fifth, the designated hitter, number 27, Cassidy Watt. Batting sixth and playing second base, number four, Aiden Perry. Batting seventh, the center fielder, number 17, Hunter Vickmeyer. Batting eighth and playing third base, number 30, Dawson Portner. And batting ninth, the shortstop, number 22, Bubba Thompson. On the mound for the Trojans today, Will Clare. Claire, the leader in wins on the season, an 8-1 and one record overall, a 2.67 earned run average. Again, the lineup, the batting order, Green, Brownson, McDaniel, Damaria, Watt, Perry, Vic Meyer, Portner, and Thompson. So a couple of changes in the lineup from what we saw yesterday in this series opener. The two head coaches meeting now with the two-man umpiring crew around home plate. Bellevue head coach, Dwayne Monlux and Dakota State head coach Darian Hardy. Home plate umpire today will be Tim Arndt, and the base umpire will be Brandon Moore for game number one. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the home team, your Bellevue University Bruins. Leading off for the Bruins and playing center field, number 21, Jake Lacey. Batting second, the catcher, number 10, Logan Grant. Batting third, the shortstop, number 24, Brendan Luther. The cleanup hitter today for the Bruins and playing first base, number 36, Stephen Elsner. Batting fifth and playing right field, number 17, Anthony Lind. Batting sixth, the designated hitter, Tyler Monroe. Batting seventh and playing third base, number 31, Nick Grade. Batting eighth and playing second base, number seven, C.J. Townsend. And batting ninth and playing left field, number 25, Takumi Mayeno. On the mound for the Bellevue Bruins, the all-time career wins leader for Bellevue with 27 victories over his three-year career. 
Blake Crippen. Blake currently 6-1 and one on this 2024 campaign, a 3.27 earned run average for the Bruins Southpaw. Again, the Bellevue batting order will be Lacey Grant Luther, Elsner Lind Monroe, Grade Townsend, and Mayano. So a couple of changes in the batting order for the Bellevue Bruins as well. Again, as we mentioned in our broadcast yesterday, two Bruins who see a lot of playing action on the season not available this weekend. First baseman Alec Ackerman has an oblique injury. And middle infielder Nick Gravel has a rib injury. So they're not available, but they'll be cheering on their teammates as this doubleheader goes on. Game number one will be a seven-inning contest. Game number two, a nine-inning contest. And then we want to remind you to stick around after the game. 17 Bellevue baseball players will be honored today. Not the final game of the season, but... This weekend will be the day that they'll be recognized for their contributions to the Bellevue baseball program over the years. If you were with us yesterday, welcome back. If you were not yesterday, then we're glad you're here today. A nice afternoon of baseball about to unfold before us on the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network. Let's meet the starting lineups. Ray Quinn, the public address announcer. You'll hear Ray's voice in the background of today's broadcast as we go along. While he reads the lineups for the crowd on hand here today, we'll give you a few more bits of information about John Stella Field and Brown Park. Brown Park, about a 10 to 15 minute drive from the Bellevue campus. This has been the home field for the Bellevue program for now five years. It's a field turf, a synthetic field. It's been that way for the last three years. 325 the distance down the left and right field lines, about 380 to straightaway center field. There's an eight foot high fence ringing the outfield. A nice big dark green hitting background behind the center field fence as well. The Dakota State Trojans are now being introduced. The Trojans will be in their all Navy uniforms today with light blue trim. The Bellevue Bruins will be in the home uniforms with gold jersey tops and white pants with purple trim to go with them. For the Trojans, center fielder number 17, Hunter Pickmeyer. Dwayne Monlux in his 14th season as the coach, the head coach of the Bellevue program. He celebrated his 800th career victory as a coach last week. Continues to add to that. Started his career at Dickinson State University and now 14 years here at Bellevue. The associate head coach, the senior member of the staff, Mitch Schmidt, has been with the Bellevue program for 18 years. Pitching coach Sean Malley for 17 years and assistant coach Richie Moore for 14 years, so a very senior, experienced coaching staff for the Bellevue Bruins. Darian Hare Hardy is in his fifth season leading the Dakota State program. His assistant coaches are Dan Rutan, Quentin Evers, Hakeem Yatim, and Chris Burke. The Bruins take the field. Brendan Luther. In the cleanup spot, first baseman number 36. Stephen Elsner. Batting fifth, right fielder number 17, Anthony Lind. Batting sixth, designated hitter number two, Tyler Monroe. Batting seventh in the lineup, third baseman number 31, Nick Gray. Again, we want to remind you, if you would like to be part of our broadcast, we had many people text in yesterday. Send along a text message. Let us know where you are, who you are, who you're rooting for, any tidbits of information that would help to make an even better broadcast coming your way on this Saturday afternoon. 402-515-7654. A lot of families are here today with Senior Day. So we're looking forward to having a nice ceremony at the conclusion of today's doubleheader. At this time, we ask all fans to please rise and remove cover as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem.
right, our national anthem is in the books. A nice crowd on hand today. We expect the crowd will grow as the day goes on. The temperature right now 45 degrees, expecting a high about 52 or 53 degrees. That's about 10 to 12 degrees below what you normally expect for this time of the year on the season average. Let's set the Bellevue defense for you. A little bit different look for the home team. Across the infield, Steven Elsner is at first base. C.J. Townsend is at second. The shortstop is Brendan Luther, and the third baseman is Nick Grade. Across the outfield, Takumi Miano getting the start in left. Jake Lacey in center, and Anthony Lynn in right. The battery for the Bruins behind the dish is Logan Grant. And on the mound is Southpaw, Blake Crippen. Crippen, as I mentioned, 27 career wins as a Bellevue Bruin. That's tops on the Bruins pitching chart. Six and one this year, a 3.27 earn run average. This is his 11th appearance on the year, all of them as a starting pitcher. He's thrown 52 in the third innings, has allowed 48 hits, 22 runs, 19 of them earned, has struck out 35 and has walked 19. Again, a 3.27 earn run average. The first batter he will face today is the Trojans left fielder, Jeremy Green. All right, let's get ready for some baseball action. Seven inning game number one, nine inning game number two. Coming to you live from John Stella Field in Brown Park. Here is the first pitch. Swung on and missed. We noticed yesterday that Green, as a leadoff man, likes to swing at the first pitch. He did so just about every time in that capacity in both ends of the doubleheader. Again, swing and a miss. That pitch tailing away, 0-2 the count. Blake Crippen working ahead. Crippen kind of a pitch-to-contact guy. He does have the ability to get a strikeout, but very efficient, kind of the crafty southpaw type of pitcher. Next pitch in the dirt or in the pebbles with this field turf field. Again in the dirt, off the body of catcher Logan Grant. Blake, a traditional pitcher, he'll work from the windup with nobody on base. Toes the rubber on the first base side, gets his signal from Grant and gets back to work. Here's the 2-2 pitch, now three and two. Green, after swinging at the first two pitches, lays off the next three out of the zone. So payoff pitch to the leadoff batter, Jeremy Green. Crippen delivers. Swing and miss. So just said that Blake is a pitch-to-contact guy, but he gets the leadoff hitter on the swinging strikeout. Next up for the Trojans, right fielder Corey Brownson. Trojans number 18, right fielder Corey Brownson. Brownson hitting... 402 on the season. Lefty lefty matchup fouled back to the net behind home plate. The backstop is not very far behind home plate, maybe 45 or 50 feet. So if there's a runner at third base and a wild pitch pass ball occurs, it's not always guaranteed. It's going to be an easy trot home. Blake back to work. Fastball hit on the ground towards second base. CJ Townsend Covers some territory, moving to his glove hand side. He'll make the catch, makes the uh, the pick and the throw, and we've got one away. Excuse me, two away. My brain fully hasn't engaged, I guess, here this afternoon. Three-hole hitter for the Dakota State Trojans is the catcher, Ryan McDaniel. McDaniel, the leading hitter, 430 is his average over the season. First pitch, changeup, swung on and missed. There's a good example of how Crippen can use a variety of different pitches against opposing hitters. Working quickly, breaking ball. That one's lined into left field. That'll be a base hit. Takumi Mano tracks it down into the corner. McDaniel will have to hold. Long turn around first base as Mano able to get it in quickly to deny extra bases. Let's see if we'll have a courtesy runner for the catcher. And we will. Coming in as the courtesy runner is number six, Seth Altwine. Altwine did that duty yesterday as well. Number six, Seth Altwine. And as a pinch runner, batting next. The next batter, the cleanup hitter. Number 87, Cameron. First baseman, Cameron DeMaria. DeMaria appeared only once in yesterday's doubleheader as a pinch hitter, getting the nod at first base today. Ned Seklik played first base Yesterday, that pitch in the dirt gets away on the wild pitch. Altwine able to advance to second base, now in scoring position. Demaria 
over 400 mark on the season. 414, he's only appeared in 16 games, 16 of the 44 games that the Trojans have played. Crippen working him carefully. That pitch outside, now 2-0 to count. Blake looks the runner back to second and delivers. Chopper on the ground. Brendan Luther gets an in-between hop, fields it off his belly button. Nicely done to stay in front of that one. And the throw to first base on time. A Pupek play by the shortstop, as us check speakers in this Brown Park area used to say. No runs on one hit. There were no errors and one man left on base. After half inning, the Trojans nothing. And the home team Bruins coming to bat. So a good start defensively for the Bruins behind pitcher Blake Crippen trying to notch career win 28 if he gets it in this one. Let's set the defense for the Dakota State Trojans in game number one. On the infield, Cameron DeMario will be the first baseman. Aiden Perry at second. Bubba Thompson back at short. And third baseman will be Dawson Portner. Across the outfield, Jeremy Green is in left. The center fielder today is Hunter Vickmeyer. He pitched yesterday. And the right fielder is Corey Brownson. The battery for the Trojans, Ryan McDaniel again behind the plate. And on the mound, number three, right-hander Will Clare. Clare, a great start to this 24 season. Eight wins against only one loss, a 2.67 earned run average. This is Clare's 11th appearance on the season, all of them in a starting capacity. He's thrown 54 innings, has allowed 46 hits, 20 runs, 16 of them were earned, a 6.27 earned run average. He has struck out 54 batters in those 54 innings of work. That's some tough math to figure out there. Dakota State averaging 8.2 runs per game. The Bellevue Bruins averaging 9.3. So the Bruins a one run per game advantage there on the season. On the pitching mound, a slight advantage to Dakota State. Their team earned run average is 4.13. Bellevue is 4.30. Lacey, Grant, Luther, Elsner, Lind, Monroe, Grade, Townsend, and Mayeno. The starting batting order for the home team Bruins as the Sun plays peekaboo with us. That'll happen probably quite a bit in game number one. They're saying we're going to have increasing clouds as the day goes on. Well, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> I don't know if Murray really likes all of them. Yeah. Jake Lacey strides to the plate to lead it off for the Bruins in the bottom of the first inning. Leading off for the Bruins, center fielder number 21. Jake won a four Bellevue Bruins hitting over the 400 mark on the season. Jake hitting 409, even better, an even 500 in conference play. So Will Clare toes the rubber. He'll be working from the third base side of the pitching slab as Jake Lacey steps in. A breaking ball misses low. Home plate umpire Tim Arts, base umpire Brandon Moore, longtime veteran umpires in the Omaha area. Swing and a miss, chasing a high fastball. Tim has the distinction of being one of my former students at Gross High School. One and one the count. Lacey trying to get the Bruins on the board early. That breaking ball misses wide. Now two and one. Lacey with 12 doubles, three triples, and eight home runs on the year. Again, the breaking ball that misses the zone. Now three and one. Hitters count. Here's where Lacey can be very selective on pitch and location. Wind blowing from left to right. Slight advantage for the left-handed hitters. Lacey pops that one up on the infield. Will it stay in play or not? Demaria, the first base, runs out of room. Just a couple of feet behind the fence. 
so many guys on the Bellevue roster that they had to kind of clear the area and try not to interfere with the play. Yeah, I'd let him flow. Sorry. So a full count after that foul ball to Jake Lacey. Damari at six foot nine, so as he's charging over to the fence, you guys definitely going to scatter out of his way. So the count goes full to each team's leadoff hitter. Let's see what happens here with the Bruins leadoff guy. Fastball popped up to shallow right field. Coming in and making the play is the right fielder, Corey Brownson, and one away in the Bruins' half of the first inning. Batting second for the Bruins. Batting second for the Bruins, the reigning North Star, NAIA, baseball and Canadian Baseball Network Player of the Week, Logan Grant. He's earned those titles after a fantastic series last weekend against Mayville State that included six home runs and 17 runs batted in. That's a good weekend's worth of work. Overhand breaking ball at the top of the strike zone for call. Strike one, Logan Grant hitting 363 overall, 417 in conference play. His 16 home runs are tops for the Bruins. Comes up empty on that swing on the fastball. 58 runs batted in, also tops there. And he's also a team leading 13 doubles. Second year as a Bellevue Bruin, he was the newcomer of the year in the conference last year. Foul out of play opposite way, one and two. Or excuse me, 0 oh and two. Bellevue won both games in yesterday's doubleheader to increase their league lead to three games over the Trojans. Missing inside, one and two. These two teams met last year for the conference championship in a four-game set. Dakota State won the first. Bellevue won the next three to win the conference championship. Change up, and Grant swings over the top of that. The strikeout is the second out of the inning. So both pitchers in the early going showing they've got quite a few different pitches in their repertoire. Here's yesterday's game one hero for the Bruins, shortstop Brendan Luther. His walk-off single in the bottom of the seventh inning gave the Bruins a 4-3 to three win in that one. And not to be outdone, he then had four hits in game number two. Four hits and three runs batted in. That one hit down the left field side. That's going to squirt out of play. Brendan, another one of those guys over the 400 mark on the season. 4.15 to be exact. Over 500 in conference play. 5.45. Here's the pitch from Claire. Again, the breaking ball. That time it's in the zone. Now 0-2 on Luther. Uh, on the the yeah. Brendan had a series a couple of weeks ago where he hit 750 on the four-game set. That earned him Player of the Week honor. Line and through the hole in the left field for the base hit. So the Bruins have their first hit of the afternoon. So both teams, three hole hitters, collect their first hits of the day. And that'll bring to the plate first baseman, Steven Elsner. Elsner, normally the Bruins' left fielder, playing first base today in the absence of Alec Ackerman. Ryan David got the start at first base for the Bruins yesterday, but Coach Mollix deciding to switch Elsner to first in this one and start to Kumi Mieno in left breaking ball misses away so we've already seen in inning number one that clear likes that big overhand breaking ball hasn't found exactly the touch has only been in the zone a couple of times comes set just above the belt that breaking ball swung on and missed elder a little out in front with that swing one ball, one strike to count on the Bruins. Cleanup hitter. Elsner hitting 403 in conference play. That fastball on the outside corner. 
for the called strike. Flag gently wafting out in center field. Fouled off the body of Elsner in the batter's box. Count remains at one and two. Brendan Luther, the base runner at first. Elsner, a guy with some pop in his bat. He's second on the team with 13 home runs. Also second on the team and runs batted in with 48. Throw over to first base. Luther back easily. <coughs> the one two. Breaking ball, swung on and missed. So two strikeouts in the inning for starting pitcher Will Clare. No runs on one hit. There were no errors and one man left on base. Identical first innings for both teams' offense. No runs on the board with a single single as we head to the second inning. Hey, again, we want to remind you, if you'd like to be part of our broadcast, send along a text message to 402-515-7600. Five, four. We've got a few in the queue here already. Let's sweep from the Montana McMahons in Mexico. Happy Senior Day and go Bruins. Parker's family, a little vacation time down south of the border. Glad you're listening in. And our every game, mm, baby, from the Townsends live in Omaha. Let's get the bats going, Bruins. Let's go, CJ. Stay hot. Older son Brock picked up the victory on the mound in game number two yesterday. I'm sure you guys enjoyed that. Blake Crippen's family says, let's go Bruins. And a baseball emoji as well. Glad you guys are here as well as the Bruins will be honoring 17 seniors or guys whose eligibility will come to an end today. Blake is one of them. Top of the second inning, leading it off, designated hitter Cassidy Watt. First pitch fastball off the outside edge. Cassidy Watt hitting 271 on the season for the Trojans. Down low, now 2 0. Trojans uniforms kind of remind me of some of those. Cityscape uniforms that major league teams use as an alternate jersey. Swings and misses. Look like a changeup. Now two and one. Well worth it. I would never do it again, but well worth it for the one. Probably about first spot in it. Probably. <laughs> no, they give us stuff away. Fast, or fastball. We'll cut fastball coming inside. Now two and two. Nice mixing of pitchers by Crippen. The changeup that goes away from the right-handed batter, then the little cut fastball that comes in. Chopped on the ground, Nick Gray, the third baseman, cuts in. His sidearm throw is on time to retire Watt, heading down the first baseline. Again, one of those plays hit out there toward the shortstop position, but the third baseman, Gray, made that nice charge to glove it, throw it, and the out is recorded. Second baseman, Aiden Perry, next to bat for Dakota State. Peyton was... Conference Player of the Week a couple of weeks or so ago. First pitch from Blake is wide. 348 is Perry's average on the season. Breaking ball on the outer half. Blake wasting no time on the mound, getting the signal from catcher Logan Grant and quickly to work. That's again in the zone on the called strike. One and two. Home plate umpire Tim Martin, usually a, a pitcher's umpire, usually has kind of a wide zone. Those two are excellently placed, then tries to come inside with the fastball. Count evens up at two and two. Crippen shakes off the first pitch, likes the second. Foul up near the Bruins dugout. Mm -hmm. 
The line and the delivery flared out of play opposite away. Count stays at two and two. Hit in the air to center field, charging hard is Jake Lacey. And he'll get there, camp and makes the catch for the second out of the inning. Next up for the Trojans, center fielder Hunter Vickmeyer. Vickmeyer got the start for the Trojans on the mound in game number two yesterday. Trojans use a total of five pitchers in that second game of the contest that the Bruins won 11 to two. First pitch on the inner half called strike one. Crippen is joined today here by his dad, Mark, and his stepmom, Brooke, and his brother, Kaysen. They'll be part of the ceremonies at the end of the day. Powers that fastball in for 0-2 count. Blake started his career at Lane Community College before becoming a Bellevue Bruin. That's fouled off the foot of Vic Meyer. Blake from Hillsboro, Oregon. Again, the Pacific Northwest has always been a fertile recruiting ground for the Bellevue Bruin program. A shake, and now the delivery. Trying to shoot the outside corner, just off the edge, one and two. Good location for the count, good plate discipline by Vic Meyer, not to chase. Line hard. Past head coach Darian Hardy in the third base coaching box. Walker Holtgren got the start yesterday in center field. Vic Meyer there today. Fastball called, strike three. Nicely located just above the knees on the inner half. Second strike out of the game for Blake Crippen as it's a three up, three down, top of the second inning. After one and a half, our score is still scoreless on the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network. Mick Krupski joining us today. Bruins will have the five, six, seven spot in the order as we go to the bottom of second inning. Will Clare back to the mound for Dakota State. Clare with eight victories on the year. That's tops on the Dakota State staff. Here we go with the bottom of the second inning for the home team Bruins. League and off right fielder Anthony Lind. Anthony Lind. Lind 349 average on the season. 414 in conference play. So his bat has gotten hot over the last month or so. Overhand breaking ball again. The first pitch from Claire. It's up out of the zone. Neither pitcher looks like they're throwing 90 plus, but they've got good location with most of their pitches and they use a variety in their repertoire. That at the top of the zone, one and one the count. Again, the breaking ball misses in. 
a little cooler today than it was yesterday, but we're starting an hour earlier too. Expect the temperature today to get up to about 52, 53 degrees. And we've got a warning for the Dakota State bench as home plate umpire Tim Arndt did not like hear the chirping that was coming from the third base dugout. And now Darian Hardy will come out of the dugout to uh, continue the conversation. A very gentle, polite conversation, huh? More or less. And now both gentlemen have made their points, and we'll get back to the baseball game. <laughs> Two balls, one strike to count on Anthony Lind. Bruins had seven hits in game number one yesterday, 15 in game number two as Lynn sails that out of play down the right field side. Anthony had a two-run home run in game two yesterday. Opposite way. Again, the breaking ball, but out of the zone. Two balls, two strikes on Anthony. That one's hit well to center field. Vickmeyer going back at the warning track. He'll look up, and for the second consecutive game, Anthony Lynn goes yard with the solo home run to give the Bruins a one-run lead. Right field yesterday, center field today for the Bruins' right fielder. For Lind, that is home run number seven on the year. And run batted in number 21. To the deepest part of the park, that's about 380 or so right there. And it cleared the white or the yellow stripe on the top of the fence for the Bruins' first run of the game. Here's designated hitter Tyler Monroe. Pitch from Claire is wide on the fastball. Monroe had a good day yesterday, raising his batting average to 429 in conference play. Now 2 0. Oh. Monroe had two hits in each of the two games yesterday. Foul back to the net. Two and one the count. On the Bruins DH today, Tyler Monroe. Fastball. Inner half called strike. Tyler with a one-year career as a Bellevue Bruin. He will be part of that crew honored at the end of today's activities. Overhand breaking ball. That's in the air to center field. Vic Meyer comes on, and it bangs off his glove. Monroe wasting no time. He's going to hustle all the way, getting to second base. E8, air on the center fielder. A ball that... Should have been caught, banged in and out of his glove, but great hustle by Tyler Monroe. He was going hard out of the batter's box, saw the ball clank to the ground and kept right on going. So a two-base air puts a runner in scoring position for third baseman Nick Grade. Monroe gets his lead. Grade squares the bunt, pulls it back thinking it was going to be high, but the curveball broke down into the zone for a called strike one. Bruins a team that uses the bunt as a big part of their offensive game, whether it be a sacrifice or a bunt for a hit. 
Let's see what Grade is asked to do here down 0-1. Squares again, pulls it back. Nice block up there by the catcher, Ryan McDaniel, to keep it from becoming a wild pitch. And now McDaniel and Claire will have a little converse, a conversation, probably about what signal they want to use with a runner at second base. Monroe has a good look in to see what signal's flashing down. Great hitting 322 in conference play. Again shows bunt. Puts that one down in a nice location. McDaniel out from behind the plate, though, makes a nice defensive play. Tyler Monroe advancing to third on the sacrifice bunt by Nick Grade. So excellent execution by both the offense and defense on that play. So a runner at third now with just one out as second baseman C.J. Townsend will come to the plate. CJ Dakota State will bring the infield in. Trying to cut down the run at the plate. As they think runs are going to be few and far between in this one like they were in yesterday's first game. Oh, Townsend trying to lift something to the outfield if he can. And the bunt is on. Put up the third base side. A great bunt by Townsend. He's going to reach first base. And he stumbles as the overthrow. And he'll be tagged out as he made a move towards second base. So a strange plan. Hopefully CJ has not hurt too badly. Comes up limping a little bit. The third baseman came charging on the play for Dakota State. That's Dawson Portner. Didn't get a good grip on the throw down the first baseline. And now Dwayne Monleck's going over to talk with Brandon Moore, the first base umpire. If you make any kind of move towards second base, you're kind of fair game. CJ went down, couldn't do much, and DeMario applied the tag. How are you going to rule that, Bill? It's going to be an E5 back bunt RBI out for the three. All right, thank you. So officially an E5 on the play as the throw went over the head of the first baseman. So a sacrifice bunt for Townsend, also a run batted in. And then three unassisted on the put out at first. And now the. Uh, give the uh, second baseman an assist for that. Second baseman gets an assist. Oh, he feels. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, so four to three on the play for the put out. As second baseman Aiden Perry was there to make that catch of that overthrow. We'll make sure we get everybody some credit for the play. And yes, the call will stand about being out rounding first base. So two bunts in the inning lead to a run. And now a two to nothing lead for the Bruins. Here's left fielder Takumi Mayeno. Takumi batting 429 on the year in limited action. Takumi's first pitch swinging just foul down the third base line. Takumi's been in 37 of the Bruin games this year, most of time as a pinch runner or a courtesy runner. This is only his eighth at bat on the season. Second year as a Bellevue Bruin. Breaking ball, bounce to the plate, one and one the count. Takumi all the way from Fukuoka, Japan. Fastball off the outside edge. Breaking ball. That one's in the zone. Evens the count at two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Bottom of the second inning. Two to nothing, our score. Deuces are wild all over the place. Breaking ball, misses up, count goes full.
Payoff pitch upcoming to see if the inning ends or stays alive. Claire delivers, fastball. That one's hit well to left field. Takumi Mayeno goes yard, excitedly jumps on first base as his teammates in the dugout congratulate him. <laughs> Takumi Mayeno with his first home run of his career as a Bellevue Bruin. The fans love it. Maybe not as much as Takumi, but his teammates are mobbing him now up the line in the first base dugout. Takumi known more for his legs than for his power. Center fielder number 21, Jake Lacey. So the Bruins take a three to nothing lead. Fastball that right down the middle of play. Takumi turned on it and drove it hard. Here's the top of the order. Jake Lacey lays off a breaking ball that dips out of the zone. So Claire with the 267 earned run average coming in has allowed three runs to the Bruins in this second inning. That breaking ball is in the zone. Very true. One and one the count on Lacey. Second time through the order for the Bruins. Lacey flew out to right field his first time up today. That one's hit well, but it's going to go foul down the left field side. Lacey will have one more year of eligibility, being a junior right now. Here's the pitch, breaking ball, just misses. One and two. Both pitchers in and around the zone with their deliveries. McDaniel sets up outer half. Chopped on the ground to third, gloved over there by Portner, his throw on time to retire Jake Lacey. But Bellevue picks up three runs in the inning. Couple of home runs, first by Lind, then by Mayeno, with an RBI sacrifice squeeze play by C.J. Townsend in between. The Bruins three, and the Trojans nothing. Three runs on two hits, there were two errors. And nobody left on base in the inning for the Bruins as we head to the top of the third, a three-run cushion for Bellevue. I've got a conservative estimate on Takumi's home run, about 440. 440. All right. Bill Mullins got the old uh, Google Maps program on his computer, and he estimates 440 feet on the Takumi Mayano home run. That was a jolt. Last year, the Bruins had uh, Mathieu Serrois, who was the distance guy. He had several 450-plus home runs on the year. So Takumi, not a big guy, but got a lot of power in that swing and goes yard. His first career home run as a Bellevue Bruin. <laughs> top of the third inning upcoming, it'll be Portner, Thompson, and then the top of the order for the Dakota State Trojans as they try to stay in this one. Yesterday's first game, a very close one-run game. Bruins dominated in game two. Game three of the series. Bruins up on top again. Here's third baseman, Dawson Portner. Portner made the last defensive play. He'll lead it off with the bat. Portner hitting 352 in North Star play for the Trojans. First pitch down low, squirts away from Logan Grant. Blake Crippen back to work on the hill. Hit in the air to center field. Jake Lacey has a long way to go. Throws the dive. Can't quite get it. Extra bases here for Portner. He'll stop at second base. Jake Lacey a little bit slow to get up. That couldn't have felt good to have his chest slam hard. Gave a great effort, but it'll be an inning starting double for Dawson Portner. Heading next for the Trojans and ninth in their lineup. Shortstop number 22. Bubba Thompson. Lacey back up and heading to his spot out there. As Bubba Thompson, the Trojan shortstop, steps to the plate. 
down three to nothing. Let's see if the nine hole hitter is asked to sacrifice or given the opportunity to swing. Swing away. It is Bellevue three. Thompson, a 204 average in conference play for the Trojans this year. Shows bunt, pulls it back as the pitch is outside. Bellevue softball in action again today. Senior day for the softball ladies. The turbo is the opponent. Two o'clock is the starting time for the first game of that doubleheader at Roy Smith Field. Just about a mile away from John Stella Field at Brown Park. Again, bunt showed. Bunted up the first baseline. Crippen Fields, his throw to first base is in time. So a nice sacrifice bunt there by Thompson to advance Portner to third. One to three on the put out at the Trojans. Back to the top of the order. Second time through for Jeremy Green. Green a strikeout victim his first time up today. Green gives a little kiss to his bat and then steps into the box. Green, a junior out of Houston. Down Lone Star State Way. Bruins playing their defense on the infield at regular depth. They'll allow the run in exchange for an out. Fouled back to the net, 0-1. Green, the leading RBI guy. And he'll get another one here as he chops that one to second base. C.J. Townsend plays it over to first. 4-3 to three on the out. But a run batted in for Jeremy Green. That takes him to 52 runs batted in on the year. Three to one, our score as Dawson Portner scores on the play. Here's Corey Brownson, the right fielder. Ground out victim his first time up. Breaking ball misses away. Bellevue on a seven game win streak. A perfect 17-0 this year at John Stella Field at Brown Park. There's a fastball that's in the zone. Another fastball right down the heart of the plate. Brownson probably looking for something different than that. Billings, Montana, the hometown of Corey Brownson. Any rodeos up in Billings? Oh boy. A lot of good rodeos in Montana. Ray Quinn, our PA announcer, also does some rodeo PA duties. Swing and a miss on the breaking ball. The strikeout retires the side. But the Trojans do pick up one run on one hit. No errors and nobody left on base. So the sacrifice bunt advances the runner. And the ground out scores him after two, two and a half. Bellevue Bruins three. And the Dakota State Trojans won. One more text message in the queue. Grandparents Mike and Pat from North Carolina enjoying watching the games. Do a great job calling. Well, thank you. I'll take every compliment I can get. Oh, they were with us yesterday as well. Trojan fans from North Carolina watching their grandson play. If you'd like to join us via the text message, 402-515-7654. Thanks for playing with me today on this peekaboo sunny day. Again, if you weren't with us yesterday and are wondering, John Stella Field at the bottom of your screen. John, a, a longtime player and coach in this area. Coach for many years at Omaha South High School, which also uses this field. You may not be able to see it on the scoreboard, unless you've got a big screen, but South High Alumni Association paid for the scoreboard. Next year, Bellevue is paying for a new scoreboard, correct? I think that's going to move from the right side over to the left side, so it's a little bit easier to read. Yeah, very nice, according to Bill. So we'll look forward to seeing that next year as a continue to make improvements here at Brown Park. This field been used as a baseball facility for well over 100 years. Third and All of it at the amateur level. Leading things off for the Bruins. 
Leading off the bottom of the third inning, the catcher, Logan Grant. Logan red hot last week. Looks at a breaking ball in the zone for a called strike one. 15 game hitting streak for Logan. He picked up hits, had a home run and a double in game number one, a double in game number two. And maybe a home run here. That one driven to right field. Nope, I called it too soon. More off the end of the bat than the barrel as right fielder Corey Brownson there to make the catch for the first out of the inning. Have to temper my enthusiasm sometimes, I guess. Here's Brendan Luther. Brendan continuing his hot hitting streak. In addition to getting the game winning hit in the first game yesterday, he had four hits and three runs batted in in game two. Fouled out of play. Bellevue had 14 home runs in the Saturday doubleheader last weekend as Brendan Luther patiently waits for that breaking ball to get in the zone and slaps it up the middle for his second consecutive single. So Luther continuing that hot streak with two more hits today. That'll up that 545 conference average even higher. Here's Steven Elsner, strikeout victim his first time up. Will Clare with two Ks thus far. Throw over to first base. Clare averages about a strikeout per inning on the season. High fastball, Elsner doesn't chase. Elsner to the newcomer to the Bellevue program. A junior out of San Francisco, California, started his college career at the College of Marin. That breaking ball chopped off the front foot. That's going to sting for a bit. Went straight down. No protection there. Mama. <laughs> Steven will take a little stroll till he gets some sensation other than pain back in his left foot. Now he's ready to go. One and one to count in this battle between Will Clare and Steven Elsner. Pitch out, nothing on with Brendan Luther. Luther's running a whole lot better than he was a couple of weeks ago when he injured his hamstring. Has spent a couple of weeks as the Bruins DH. First weekend back now in that shortstop position. Fakes going, another big breaking ball. Elsner's having trouble with that breaking ball. Two and two the count. Let's see if the Trojans will go back to that once again. Throw back to first base. Chopped foul, Dwayne Monlux makes the play in the third base coaching box. Oh, sorry coach, we don't have it on camera. So it must never have happened. Will Clare already up to 50 pitches after two and a third innings of work. Breaking ball again, another chance and Booted that one, so we don't have video footage of that either. So he may have made both plays. He may not have made both plays. So we'll never know for sure. And now he's getting a little grief from the Dakota State dugout <laughs> after clanking on that last one. The set 
And the pitch is up high. Three and two now the count. Now we may see Brendan on the move. One out in the inning. Elsner not always a contact kind of a guy. And with the guy recovering from a leg injury, maybe the safe play is not to go. And he is not. And Elsner lines that one down in the left field corner. Luther rounding second base on his way to third. And he's being waved by Monlux. The relay will not be made cleanly. And Steven Elsner will have an RBI double into the left field corner as Brendan Luther using those legs to come all the way around from first base. And now a 4-1 to one Bruin lead. Timeout called as we have a mound visit from head coach Darian Hardy to talk to Will Clare. And that's the end of the day for Claire. So coming in with an under three earned run average, he allows four runs. The runner, Elsner at second, his responsibility as well. So the Bruins bats have pounded out five hits and four runs. And a call to the bullpen. Number zero, J.D. Kirchner, the ace of the bullpen, will head to the mound. Kirchner got a big win in the matchup on opening day last year in the series, and he's got some impressive statistics. He is the current North Star Athletic Association Pitcher of the Week. Picked up a win and a save last weekend against Valley City, so he'll get his eight warm-up tosses. Kirchner has been used exclusively out of the bullpen this year. There we go. Get the right sheet of paper. This is his 14th appearance, a three win, one loss, five save record on the season, 28 and two thirds innings pitched. He's allowed 29 hits, 17 runs, a 5.34 earned run average. So coach Darian Hardy going to his ace of the bullpen, kind of that sidearm sweeping delivery to try to keep the Bruins from getting any further ahead of the current four to one score. I'm going to have to smell pizza now for the rest of the game, huh? No, I'll eat it fast. <laughs> I'm kidding you. I'll eat it fast. <laughs> Bellevue provides us with pizza in between games of the doubleheader, so it come early today, and I'll be stuffing my face as quickly as I can in between games. All right, J.D. Kirchner now in to pitch. First man he will face, right fielder Anthony Lynn. A home run to center field his first time up. Bruins with Steven Elsner at second base. One on, one out. In the bottom of the third inning, Bruins up four to one. First pitch off the inside corner, ball one. Kirchner, a pretty tall guy, six foot five senior out of Lenox, South Dakota. Sweeping breaking ball gets the inside corner, one and one on Anthony. Anthony picked up his seventh home run of the season, his last at bat. Little chopper to the right side, Elsner will have to hold. Bubba Thompson with a strong arm throw for the second out of the inning. We've seen Thompson make several nice defensive plays over the weekend for the Trojans. Another one there with an on-the-money throw. Designated Here's designated hitter Tyler Monroe. Monroe we reached on an air his first time up on a line drive to hit the center field. Came around to score. Gelsner gets his lead off a of second. Kirchner delivers, fastball, Monroe, swing and a miss. Yeah. 
off the outside corner. 45 degrees at first pitch today. Hey, we're all the way up to 47. Heat wave. A couple of degrees cooler is the expected high today than yesterday when it got up to 55. In tight. Hitter's advantage in the count for Monroe. Swing and a miss on the fastball. Good pop on the heat by Kirchner. A little bit different look with that sidearm delivery from what starter Will Clare showed the Bruins. The set at the shoulders. Way wide on that pitch. Three balls, two strikes. Two out, one on. We're in the bottom of the third inning again. Game number one, a seven-inning game. Game number two, a nine-inning contest. On the ground to second base, Aiden Perry gloves it. Tyler Monroe, one of the fastest guys on the team, hustling down the line, but he can't get there ahead of the throw, and the side is retired. J.D. Kirchner comes in and retires the two men he faces, but the Bellevue Bruins pick up one more run on two hits. There were no errors and one man left on base. After three complete, it's Bellevue four and Dakota State one. Tyler Monroe serving as the Bruins DH in this one. He's joined here today by his parents, Misty and Joe. Tyler came to Bellevue from Central Arkansas. He'll be a one-year member of the Bruin program. From Lincoln, Nebraska, Tyler Monroe. Part of the 17 guys, quite a herd of guys will be honored on Senior Day today. Top of the fourth inning will be the middle part of the Trojan order. McDaniel, the three-hole hitter, will start things off. That's the catcher, Ryan McDaniel. The catcher, number 38, Ryan McDaniel. Wind picking up just a little bit. First pitch fastball from Blake Crippen. Outer half called strike one. That one got a little piece of Logan Grant and then got through. Got through the five hole. Logan also the goalie. It's part of his athletic background. Chopped on the ground to third. Nice charge on the play. Five to three to retire Ryan McDaniel. Nick Gray continuing to play sterling defense for the Bruins at the hot corner. First baseman number 87, Cameron. Next up, the cleanup hitter, first baseman Cameron DeMaria. Grounded out to shortstop his first time up as McDaniel now just getting back to the dugout. Blake wants to work quickly. When you feel that rhythm as a pitcher, you want to try to keep it going. Hit to right field, Anthony Lynn. Has to adjust one way, then goes back the other way. A tough play, but Anthony able to make it on the line drive off the bat of Cameron DeMaria. Quickly two outs in the top of the fourth inning as designated hitter Cassidy Watt the next to bat. Next for the Trojans designated hitter number 27, Cassidy Watt. Blake at 46 pitches thrown through three and two-thirds innings, so he's on a pretty good Pace of pitch printing. First pitch winging again to Anthony Lind. He'll head towards the line and he'll settle underneath it and make the catch. So a quick, only I think there were six pitches in the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors on the three up, three down affair.
All right, it was six pitches on the inning. Three to Watt, two to DeMaria, and one to McDaniel. Bottom of the fourth inning upcoming for the Bruins, the bottom third of the order, Gray, Townsend, and Mayeno. All of them contributing in the second inning when the Bruins plated three runs. J.D. Kirchner out there standing all alone on the mound as his defensive teammates gather up the third base side. Now they take the field. Just a little tweak, a unique thing that the Trojans do when they get ready for defense. Kirchner and his teammates ready to go on defense as the Bellevue Bruins get ready to go on offense. Third baseman Nick Grade will start it off. A sacrifice bunt contributed to the second run of the game for the Bruins in the second inning. Nick from Kennewick, Washington looks at the first pitch off the outside edge. Ball won the call. Lined and through, base hit for Nick Grade. Past the outstretched glove of third baseman Dawson Portner, so the Bruins get the leadoff guy on. Wanting to try to add to their current four to one lead. Second Next up is C.J. Townsend. C.J. got the sacrifice and RBI his first time up today. Kirchner holds those hands way high on the set position. Townsend tries to bunt, but the pitch kind of came into his body. Couldn't get a good angle of the bat on it. And puts it foul up the third base side. The Eugene, Oregon native. Started his college career at Treasure Valley Community College. Throw over to first base. CJ's with the Bellevue program now in his third years. First year was mostly as a courtesy runner and little time on the infield. Became a regular for the Bruins last year and again this year. Can play some second base, can play some shortstop. We've seen him in both of those positions. And bunts that one back to the net. CJ usually a pretty good bunter. 0-2 now the count. Let's see if the bunt kept on or not. CJ had a 20-game hitting streak earlier this season. Started on the trip to Florida. Kept it going for many games once he got back here to the Midwest. Breaking ball, misses wide. McDaniel with a nice play with the backhand. Four runs on six hits for the Bruins. One run on two hits for Dakota State. The Trojans have made two errors. Both of them contributing to the Bruins scoring run. Sidearm breaking ball, misses wide once again, two and two. CJ's ready to go as Kirchner comes to the set position. 2 2 pitch, way wide, full count. Still nobody out. Nick Gray, the runner at third, 
Let's see if head coach Dwayne Monlux puts him in motion. CJ usually pretty good bat control. If it's in or around the zone, he'll most likely make some contact. Runner holds as it's fouled back out of play. Nick does have five stolen bases on the year. He's five out of seven in stolen base attempts. And that one is behind the batter. And on the walk, Bruins will now have runners at first and second. As Takumi Mayeno, a 440-foot home run his last time up, maybe call on to bunt here. Left fielder number 25, Takumi Mayeno. Top of the order awaits on deck. Bottom part of the order has been pretty productive today for the Bruins. Getting guys on or getting guys moved up. Kirchner delivers to Kumi. A beautiful bunt on the third base line. Portner feels that his throw will not be in time. Great location on the bunt by Takumi. He shows power and he shows placement as he picks up his second hit of the day. Townsend advancing to second, grade to third. And the bases are loaded for the top of the order. Center fielder, Jake Lacey. Center fielder number 21, Jake Lacey. Again, the infield will be pulled in. They're going to try to cut the run down at the plate on an infield grounder. But that opens up some extra hitting lanes for Lacey. Jake 0 for 2 today. Lays off on the breaking ball. Kirchner, the ace of the bullpen for Dakota State. Nobody else thrown in the bullpen. Fouled back to the net. They're going to try to go with him as long as he can. One ball, one strike to count. Lined out of play, right side. Bruins look like they've gotten used to that sidearm delivery of J.D. Kirchner. Lacey wanting to try to make contact here. Got a piece of that one to follow back. Kirchner doesn't throw out of that same arm slot every single pitch. He kind of adjusts the degree of his sidearmness, if that is such a word. So that means a little different movement on the pitches as they come in. We'll do the one-two again. Breaking ball. That's hit well to left field. Left fielder going back. It's a grand salami. A grand slam home run for Jake Lacey. As the Bruins extend their lead to 8-1, to one, Grade scores first, Townsend scores second, Mayano scores third. And Jake Lacey with the home run. That is his ninth home run of the year. And 48 runs batted in as that one goes over the left field fence out near my car. I was parked behind those trees out there in left field for extra protection. So Jake Lacey delivers the big blow for the Bruins. The catcher number 10, Logan Grant. Here's Logan Grant. The base is empty. Still nobody out in the inning. Logan, a sky-high fly ball up the right field side. Second baseman Perry going out. Nice job of Aiden Perry to stay with that sky-high fly ball. Had a long way to go, but able to get there in time for the first out of the inning. Next up, Brendan Luther. Brendan, two singles already in today's game and a run scored. Stepping up to bat for the Bruins, uh, shortstop number 24, Brendan Luther. The 
on the outside black called strike one. Brendan out of Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Swing and a miss. Love those polysyllabic names. Brendan's parents, Shaban and Gary, are with us today. He started his college career at Okanagan College, finishing up his second year as a Bellevue Bruin. Way wide on that pitch. He was a scholar athlete last year. Would have probably been an all-conference player as well, but he missed about two months of the season with an injury. A little flare to the left side. That could be a tough play. Three players given chase, but the left fielder able to get there in time. Jeremy Green goes a long way to haul that one in. Just inside the foul line. Gonna bring up first baseman number 36, Stephen Elsner. Steven Elsner steps up for the Bruins. He had an RBI double his last time up. Single walk, single, grand slam home run. The four runs for the Bruins in this inning. Breaking ball up and away. Elsner will be the last man in the Bruin lineup to face Kirchner for the first time. Starter Will Clare left the game after Elsner's RBI double in the third inning. I mean, that's a good number. <laughs> Big swing by Steven, but comes up empty. Two and one, the count. Smart pitch for Kirchner there, throwing a breaking ball on a 2-0 count. Not exactly what Steven was looking for. Another breaking ball, that was fouled away to make it a 2-2 count. Bellevue averaging over nine runs per game on the season. Way wide there. Bruins had a couple of 20 or more runs last weekend against Mayville State, 24 to three and 20 to seven. Swing and a miss, Elsner thought that was going wide, but couldn't check his swing. And the strikeout retires the side. Four runs on three hits. There were no errors and nobody left on base. Four innings in the books. The Bellevue Bruins lead it by a score of eight to one. Couple of 20 run or more games last weekend. The weekend before at Waldorf, they had a 33-run game in a 33-2 route to conclude that series. Seven games of the 10 played in the month of April, the Bruins have scored 10 or more runs. So that's getting it done on offense. Coming to you live from John Stella Field, we start the top of the fifth inning. The Bruins up 8-1 to one over the Dakota State Trojans. It'll be second baseman Aiden Perry to lead things off for the Navy blue-clad Trojans. Back to work for Blake Crippen. Perry swung so hard, he knocked his arm guard off. <laughs> now he's sharing a laugh with home plate umpire Tim Hart. A good start once again for Blake Crippen, working ahead of most of the hitters he has faced this afternoon. That's pretty much been the story of Blake's three-year career at Bellevue. He's a guy that knows how to pitch, doesn't have to always try to overpower you. He puts the ball in good locations ahead 0-2 in the count. Let's see where he goes with this one. Oh, 
so much for location on that one as it hits the back of Aiden Perry. Looks like he's going to be okay as he strips off his protective gear and heads down to first base on the hit by pitch. Just the second time in five innings that the Trojans have had their leadoff guy get on. Center fielder number seven. Next up, center fielder Hunter Vickmeyer. Trailing, trailing by seven, the, the Trojans can't afford to be too crazy on the base paths here. Chopper foul, and oh, we've got the head coaches are going to need to take some fielding practices. Darian Hardy lets that one eat him up. In between games, let's have Coach Hardy and Coach Monlex out there. We'll hit some fungos at him. Again, ahead in the count, 0-1. Now 0-2 once again as Vic Meyer comes up empty on that swing. 50 pitches so far for Blake Crippen. So he's got a chance of throwing a complete game. Dustin Shorey almost got the complete game yesterday. Went six and two-thirds. Wound up not figuring in the decision. That pitch just misses off the outside edge. One and two the count on Vic Meyer. Struck out looking his first time up. Ground ball to short. Luther. To Townsend, and on over to first to Elsner. The Bruins turn the six to four to three, double play. To the pitcher's best friend. The double play brings to the plate. Third baseman, number 30, Dawson Portner. Dawson Portner tries to keep the inning alive for Dakota State. Portner doubled and scored the only run of the game for Dakota State his first time up in the third inning. Off the inside edge. On the outside corner. Swing and a miss. That got him inside. Couldn't quite get the barrel of the bat ahead of that one. Into center field. That's going to drop for a base hit. So a two for two day for Dawson Portner. A double in the third and now a single in the fifth to keep the inning going for the Trojans. Blake Crippen also, besides being a pitcher, he fancies himself as a golfer. Has aspirations of making it to the PGA. Don't know if you'll quite get there, but hey, it's always good to dream big. Here's the shortstop, Bubba Thompson. Throw over to first base, that left-hander's move. But not quite in time. The delivery home. Thompson lines it in the left field. Takumi Miano will have to play it on a hop. So back-to-back -back base hits for Dakota State. Give their fans a few things to cheer about. But two outs in the inning. And back to the top of the order, leadoff guy, Jeremy Green. Green has credit for the only run batted in so far for Dakota State on an infield ground out with the runner at third his last time up. Green now with the team leading 52 runs batted in on the year for Dakota State. Don't know if he hit deeper in the order earlier in the year. It's kind of unusual to have a leadoff guy be that high and runs batted in. Or it could be the bottom half of the order gets on base a lot in front of him. Take your pick. 1-0 and the count on Green. Chop down the third baseline foul. No play by the coach yet. That was tough. We won't, we won't give him a hard time for that. Wind expected to pick up a little bit more as the day goes on. Chopped off the body of green. Now one and two. Last night's weather forecast said highs of about 52, 53. Wind gusts steady in the teens out of the northwest with gusts into the upper 20s. 
So a chilly day, but not a terrible day for baseball in the Midwest. The one-two pitch on its way from Blake Crippen. Swung on and missed. Oh, dropped at the plate. So a foul off the bat of Crippen that Logan couldn't quite hold on to. It may have gotten a piece of Logan's hand. Giving it a shake. Home plate umpire Tim Art will give Logan a little extra time as he walks a new baseball out to Crippen. Again, part of that camaraderie between the home plate umpire and the catcher to a little tap on the fanny as well. Good game, see you. Go two out, two on. One and two the count on Jeremy Green. Crippen set just above the belt. Chopper, comebacker, Blake, a good fielding play. Over to first, and the side is retired. So a couple of hits on the inning, but no runs on those two hits. There were no errors and two left on base. As we head to the bottom of the fifth inning, it's Bellevue 8 and Dakota State 1. No 10-run rule in the seven-inning contest. There is a 10-run rule after seven innings in the nine-inning second game of the doubleheader. One run on four hits, two errors for Dakota State to this point in the game. Eight runs on eight hits and no errors for the Bellevue Bruins. Both these teams good with the glove. Yeah. Who's this? Dakota State has only made 47 errors on the year. Bellevue has only made 39. And one game was just a disastrous nine air game. So take those away and you've got an even better. Bellevue with a 973 fielding percentage. Dakota State with a 964 percentage. So a new pitcher coming in. J.D. Kirchner's day is done. Number five is dun, 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 Aiden Roca. Aiden Roca is the new pitcher. Correction, Aiden Roca. Get on the right page. You bet. I just turned it for us. So each of the two pitchers, though thus far for Dakota State, are responsible for four earned ru four runs apiece. Not all of them are earned. Three earned runs, excuse me, two earned runs against the starter and four against Kirchner. All right, let's find out a little bit more about Aiden Rocha. He's a senior right-hander. This is his fourth appearance on the season. Only four innings of work to this point. Two hits, three runs, two of them earned a 4.50 earned run average. So an inning and two-thirds for Kirchner. And now it's Roach's time to try to keep the Bruins bat in check to give his team an opportunity to come back from their seven-run deficit. Here's Anthony Lynn to start it off. Anthony with the home run and a ground out in his two plate appearances today. First pitch from Aiden Roca, down low, ball one. Base hit to left field. As Anthony Lynn now two for three on the day, he greets Roca with a solid single to left. Designated hitter Tyler Monroe steps in. Tyler reached on an air and grounded out in his two at-bats today. Tyler Monroe. I notice weird things. There are four guys named Aiden on the South Dakota, on the Dakota State team. Don't know why that struck me as strange, but Aiden's not a name you you heard a whole lot before. It's more of a 21st century name, I think. Foul out of play on the first pitch. It's funny how that goes in cycles. Again, foul out of play opposite way. 0 and 2 the count. As a former teacher, for a while, everybody was named, every other kid was named Scott. 
Chapman Michael there. That, what a great name that is. So. Sometimes traditional names, sometimes unusual. Runner goes on the pitch, hit in the air to the left side. Green settles underneath it, and Anthony Lynn will have to head back to first base. One out, one on in the inning as Nick Grade will step in. The Bruins third baseman, a sacrifice bunt his first time up, and then a single and a run scored. He was on ahead of the grand slam by Jake Lacey. So Lynn was running on the last pitch. Let's see if he might be in motion once again. Throw over to first base to keep him a little closer. Anthony with the team leading 15 stolen bases, 15 out of 18 attempts. Big jump on the way he goes. Throw to second base is off the mark out into center field. Anthony will pick up and head over to third base, so he'll get credit for a stolen base and then an E2 on the throw. So the Bruins now have a runner at third base with one out. Dakota State will most likely have to play their infield in again. Yeah, now they're all coming in. A couple are in and a couple are just not quite there. Now everybody's coming up. Breaking ball on the inside corner for the called strike. One ball, one strike, one out. With Nick Grade at the plate. Grade tries to check his swing. They'll appeal out to the out, out the base umpire. No swing. Confirmed now two and one. Top foul out of play, right side over by the Bruins side of the field. Bellevue in the first base dugout as they have been all season long. The visitors occupy the third base dugout at John Stella Field. That one skips past the catcher. Here comes a runner from third. The play at the plate is off the mark on the throw as Anthony Lynn scores the ninth run of the game on the wild pitch. That one didn't go straight back, so Lynn had a little bit extra time to get home as Ryan McDaniel had to scramble to get to it, but his throw to the pitcher covering off the mark. Nine to one, our score. Nine runs on eight hits. The Bruins have taken advantage of all three of the Dakota State airs as that pitch is upstairs, and Nick Grade will get the walk. When head coach Darian Hardy brought in J.D. Kirchner, he was hoping Kirchner would keep the Bruins close, give his team a chance to come back. So when the Bruins put up a four spot against Kirchner, he replaced him with Aiden Rocha. Here's Bellevue second baseman C.J. Townsend. Line hard in the left field. Jeremy Green got a good jump, cut, cut it off in the gap. Second out in the inning. Yesterday, the Bruin bats hit a lot to the center field position. Today is Jeremy Green in left, who's getting the yeoman's work across the outfield. That's already his fourth put out of the game. Here's Takumi Mieno. Went yard his first time up, bunted his way on with a single his second time. Outside, ball one. Lionheart, another base hit for Takumi down the line. Could be extra bases, definitely is extra bases. Here comes a runner around third. Nick Gray chugging for home. The throw is off the glove of the catcher. The throw back to second base. Takumi able to get back. So Takumi Mayeno with an RBI double. He's now a triple away from the cycle for the Bruins. What a great way to flash it with the bat on senior day. Dwayne Monlux with that right arm a-pumping, signaling for Nick Gray to head on home, and the Bruins lead it by 9-1. to one. Come by to play, Bruins center fielder number 21, Jake Lacey. Here's Mr. Grand Slam, Jake Lacey.
Mayano gets his lead at second. Breaking ball. Squibber to the right side. Aiden Perry able to get a glove on it, but his throw to first base will not be in time. Or they say he is out. Ooh. Lacey went tumbling over the first baseman, Cameron DeMaria. Bang, bang, play. Look, again, we're 100 feet away from the play, but it looked like Jake had beaten that one out and then got taken out on the, on the play, but it's going to be a, a ground ball out. After five, Bruins 10. 10 to 1, our score. Two runs in the inning on three hits. There were no errors and one man left on base as we head to the top of the sixth inning. The Bruins on top by a score of 10 to 1. All right, looks like a pitching change. So five innings of work for starter Blake Crippen. He will qualify for the win if the Bruin Relief Corps can hold it. First man out of the pen for the Bruins today is number five, Parker McMahon. His family always listening in and texting in from Montana. Got an opportunity here to see Parker get some work in for the Bruins. Parker McMahon. This is Parker's 12th appearance on the season. He got one start. The rest of his work has been in relief. A two win, one loss record in 19 and a third innings of work. Has allowed 19 hits, nine runs, all of them earned. Has struck out 14 and walked 10. A 6.52 earn run average for Parker McMahon. Parker six foot three, 200 pounds from Bozeman, Montana. Two innings to go in this seven-inning contest. Brutus the Bruin on hand this afternoon. Joining the funds, he'll be part of the ceremonies as well as Bellevue Honors 17 seniors. We'll be finishing up their eligibility in a Bellevue University baseball uniform. Here we go at the top of the sixth. Right fielder Corey Brownson will lead things off against Parker McMahon. First pitch just below the knees, ball one. Oh for two on the day for Brownson. On the knees that time he gets the call, one and one. A little bit of the gold on the shoes of Parker McMahon matching the Bruins uniform jerseys today. Parker does a little groundskeeping with his cleats, trying to get a feel for the mound. You can see where a patch of the field turf has been replaced from last year. Strike call, now two and two. On the strike call on the inside half, Brownson did not Swinging anything in that at bat. Five pitches in, three of them in the zone. So the strikeout, the second time he has struck out today. First strikeout of the game for Parker McMahon. Next up, the catcher, Ryan McDaniel. McDaniel, a first inning single, and then a ground out his last trip. Line hard out of play above the Bruins dugout.
Only three Trojans have had hits in this game one. McDaniels had one. Thompson's had one. And Portner has had two. Blake Crippen doing a nice job of shutting down the Trojans' offense. Into right field for the base hit. Opposite field hitting by Ryan McDaniel. And now there are two Trojans with two hits apiece. McDaniel and Portner. Courtesy runner coming on. Seth Altwine has done the courtesy running for most of this series. And a little salute as he heads back out there once again. Courtesy runner number six, Seth Altwine. Cameron DeMaria, the cleanup hitter, first baseman, steps in. Number 87, Cameron DeMaria. He's 0 for 2. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that DeMaria is the tallest baseball player in the North Star Athletic Association at 6 foot 9. Swing and a miss. Slider off the hand of Parker McMahon. That pitch in the dirt picked by Grant. Still stuck in the 40s, 47 degrees. Swing and a miss, good location on the fastball at the knees. Hit to the right side, CJ Townsend with a nice diving stop. His throw on the money to first base to rob Cameron DeMaria of a base hit. Nice job by the Bruins' junior second baseman. On the play, Altwine advancing to second. Now two outs in the inning as Cassidy Watt steps in. Watt, the designated hitter, is 0 for 2 today. Parker from the stretch. Pops away momentarily from Logan Grant. Strike one on the swing against Watt. Rot from British Columbia. One of several Canadians in action today on both squads down low. One and one the count. British Columbia and Alberta, the home provinces of the two Canadian players on the Dakota State squad. A little chopper foul. Bellevue has Canadian players from Alberta, Nova Scotia, Quebec, another Quebec, Saskatchewan, and that's it. Bellevue also with two other international players, Takumi Mieno having a big day at the plate from Japan. Pitch, little flare on the infield. Who's going to get there? Parker McMahon off the mound to make the play going towards the third base line. No runs on one hit. There were no errors and one man left on base. As I continue my international thought, Nicholas Johnstone from Australia as well. So as we head to the bottom of sixth inning, 10 to 1 our score. The Bruins on top trying to control and win game number three of this three game, a uh, four game set. One final text message shout out in game number one here. If you're thinking about sending a text this way, let me know who you are, where you are, which team you're supporting. Any information you want me to pass along. 
for the day. Found out yesterday one of the players, teammate, member of the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Unfortunately, I deleted that text. <laughs> but again, that's the kind of information that makes for a, not, a more fun broadcast. So if you've got any of those tidbits, send it our way. 402-515-7654. So it looks like we might have some pinch hitters for the Bruins. And we do. Number 32, Gage Julin will start things off. Pinch hitting for the Bruins in the spot of Logan Grant. So unfortunately, Logan's 15-game hitting streak comes to an end as he takes an 0-for-3 today. As Gage Julin will start things off in the sixth. Back to work goes Aiden Rocha for the Trojans. Just off the outside edge. Gage from Elkhorn, western part of the city of Omaha. One for ten. Batting average on the season. Line hard. Oh, just foul up the third base side. Two for eleven would sound much better than one for ten in the ears of Gage Julin. Now full count. <laughs> and Julian gets clipped by the pitch. He'll head down to first base. Let's see if we'll have a courtesy runner, if Julian will stay in, and it will. That looks like Julian's going to stay in. The shortstop number. Next up for the Bruins, the shortstop, Brendan Luther. Brendan, two for three, a pair of singles and a run scored thus far. Popped up into shallow center field, the shortstop Bubba Thompson drifts back there and makes the catch for the first out. Steven Elsner next up for the Bruins. Stevens one for three today. Kind of a feast or famine day, double. Surrounded on either side by strikeouts. First time up against Aiden Rocha. Foul out of play. Snap throw over to first. Julin back in plenty of time. Gage Julin started his college career at Marshalltown Community College. Two-year member of the squad in limited action. One of many Bruins who have been named NSAA scholar athletes over the years. 1-1 one, one the count on Elsner. Line hard in the center field. That's a base hit as it drops in front of center fielder Vic Meyer. Yeah. Well, Julian at second. Elsner at first as Anthony Lynn steps in. 10 to 1 our score, 10 runs on nine hits for the Bruins. One run on five hits for the Trojans. Lind two for three day, including that solo home run his first time up. Down low. Disengagement first as Rocha steps off. 
Now back on, ready to go to work. Comes with set position just above the belt. Throws a fastball wide. A lot of play. We had an all Omaha Central graduate matchup yesterday as Anthony Lynn faced Alexander Farron, also a Central graduate. Chopped on the ground to the right side. Perry makes the diving stop. His throw to first base is just in time to retire Anthony Lynn. Four to three on the play. Both base runners move up 90 feet. So Julin now at third, Elsner at second. Designated. And designated hitter Tyler Monroe with an opportunity to drive them in. Monroe 0 for 3 today, but a great day yesterday at the plate. Left-handed batting. Off the end of the bat, out to right field. Settling underneath it out there is Corey Brownson, and he will make the catch to retire the side. The no runs on one hit. There were no errors and two men left on base as we head to the seventh inning, final inning of this one. If the Bruins can hold the nine-run lead, Bruins up by a score of 10 to 1. Let's see if Parker McMahon heads out or if somebody else will get an inning worth of work out of the bullpen. And we'll have another call to the bullpen. We'll bring in number 28, Easton Brinton. Another one of the guys finishing out his career this year for Bellevue. Easton Brinton, number 28. Easton is 6'1", 210 pounder from Murray, Utah. We'll tow the rubber for the Bruins. Pitching change for the Bruins, now pitching number 28, Easton Brinton. Sixth appearance on the season for Britain. He's thrown six and two-thirds innings, has allowed nine hits, six runs, all of them earned, has struck out six, and has walked two. Easton has an 8.10 burned run average. Hard-throwing right-hander out of Murray, Utah. We'll get an inning of work here. A lot of family here today for Easton. He's be joined by his parents, Tawny and Barry, his sister, Emmy, Another sister, Zoe, brother-in-law, Justin Trujillo, and niece, Charlie. Started his career at Mesa Community College before joining the Bellevue Baseball Program. Again, the senior day ceremony will take place after the second game of today's doubleheader. Gage Julen stays in the game behind the plate. Yeah, as the clouds building up a little bit more, we still may, still may see a few peaks of the sun, but here we go with the top of the seventh inning. Aiden Perry will lead things off. Hit by a pitch his last time up. Flew out his first appearance. First pitch from Britain. Lined into right field for a base hit for Aiden Perry. Now six hits on the game for Dakota State. Center fielder Hunter Vickmeyer. Next up, he grounded into a double play his last time up. Bruins are looking to try to do that again if they can. Breaking ball misses wide.
Fastball misses wide. So 2-0 oh the count on Hunter Vickmeyer. Right field swinging. Anthony Lind on the run. Anthony with a nice catch. Going to his glove hand side. Just a few steps from the right field foul line for the first out of the inning. Third baseman Dawson Portner next up. He's two for two. Third baseman, a double and a single. He and Ryan McDaniel, the only Trojans with multi-hit games today. Britton comes set just above the belt. Misses wide. Dawson Portner from T, South Dakota. That's a suburb of Sioux Falls. My wife's a Sioux Falls girl. Chopped on the ground to third. Nick Great has trouble on the transition. His throw to first base, however, is just in time. Five to three on the play. Perry advancing to second. And now the Trojans are down to their final out in game number one. The Bruins looking to win the first three games of this four-game set. Here's the shortstop, Bubba Thompson. Thompson, a sacrifice bunt and a single. Fastball just off the outside corner. Thompson, a junior from Appleton, Wisconsin. Two and zero as that one bounces away, up the third base side. That'll allow the runner to advance to third. That's where Perry will stop. Deflected off the shin guard of catcher Gage Julin. Two and zero the count on Thompson. Britton delivers upstairs. Three and zero. Down a whole bunch, probably be taking three and zero, but also you could think down a whole bunch, let them hack. Taking all the way right down the heart of the plate, three and one. Thompson readjusts his position in the batter's box. Now he awaits the 3-1 offering. Foul back to the net, so count will go full. Top of the order awaits on deck if Thompson keeps the inning going. Thompson appears to be a very friendly guy. I mean, when he's at second base at the shortstop position, he talks to every base runner, talking to home plate umpire Tim Art, every other pitch at this at bat. And that one's bounced to the plate, so Thompson will earn the walk. That'll put Trojans at the corners with two away and bring up Jeremy Green at the top of the order. Top lineup for the Trojans, left fielder number 88, Jeremy Green. Green with the only run batted in of the game for Dakota State. That came on an infield ground out in the third inning. Bellevue has put up runs in the second, third, fourth, and fifth for their total of 10. Fastball fouled out of play over the Bellevue bullpen on the right side. Seen a lot of parents with cameras in hand on the game today, getting pictures of their sons in play. Nice job by Julian to get out and block that one up. One and one to count. Go. 
This is not the final series of the regular season. Each team will be back in action next weekend in conference play. Come back to the mound, gets past Julen. TJ Townsend able to get it and shovel it over to Brendan Luther for the force play at second base. No runs on one hit. There were no errors and two left on base. And that will bring game number one to an end. The Bellevue Bruins with a 10 to one victory. 10 runs on 11 hits. There were no errors. One run on six hits and three errors for Dakota State. With the victory, the Bellevue Bruins are now 33 and 11. 18 and 1 in conference play. They remain unbeaten at John Stella Field at Brown Park. 18 and 0 on the season. With the loss, Dakota State drops to 31 and 13, 14 and 5 in conference play. Game number two will be coming your way in approximately 30 to 35 minutes. It's just about 2 o'clock Central Time right now. So at about 2.30 or so, we'll be back with our next broadcast, the fourth game of this four game series. The Bruins and the Trojans of Dakota State. Mick Krupski signing off for now, but come on back for more baseball on this Saturday afternoon right here on the Bellevue Bruins Sports Network. Talk to you a bit.